Alright, what is up gamers? Welcome back to CH Thumbnail Tutorial. This time, significantly better than the last one. And this is going to be a little bit more in-depth and more up-to-date with a lot of my common strategies with what I do for thumbnails. So we're just going to start with the home screen of Photoshop. You can see all my projects down here. I'm going to go into size, pixels, and what all this is for. I'm currently using a, uh, Photoshop 2024. I used to use 2020, but again, you probably could just use like Pixel R, uh, GIMP paint even like everything is just completely doable but this is more so for photoshop and tools that have similar elements to it so we're going to start off here uh, i have a preset set up already make sure your things are set to pixels not inches centimeters millimeters or anything else because it'll fuck it up and it doesn't accurately like, do like the resolution say for like youtube like 1920 by 1080 i have resolution set to 300 sometimes it's set to like 72 i don't really notice a difference sometimes but maybe if you have like supervision you can probably see it i have my width and my height set to 1280 by 720 instead of 1920 by 1080 because of youtube's two uh, megabyte limits and when I tend to make thumbnails in 1920 by 1080, it turns out to be about 2.35. And of course you could put it in a compressor, but the main problem I always see with that is the quality of the elements inside the thumbnail drops significantly. And at least with 1280 by 720, it's already in that quality. So it still is maintained relatively, but it isn't compressed. And these always turn out to be 1.35 or so. So that's why I do 1280 by 720. Um, you can do 1920 by 1080 at resolution 72. Uh, if it's still at over two, then I tend to make a new project completely in 1280 by 720. Take all of my elements, copy them back into that project and just resize everything all at once. So you can maintain the size and still have the same amount of quality while still being able to fit it inside of YouTube's limits. So we're going to have this 1280 by 720 here and we're just going to start with something simple. So on the right over here, make sure you change your background to a layer hit okay and this is kind of just what you're going to be doing for anything thumbnail related it will all be in here so first thing you want to do is go to open i have all of my elements in here everything that i've wanted to use so give myself a lot of options when it comes to highways especially for songs like this with a lot of note depth and a lot of different kinds of options for note density one thing i like to note more notes on screen looks significantly better in thumbnails. If that means you're playing slow sweeps, drop your note speed to like five and then keep the bot on and everything will look good. Uh, all right, so we're, I'm gonna pick, let's just do a three highway thumbnail just for funsies. So I'm gonna pick this one with all the open notes because there's a lot of notes on screen. Uh, this set of tap chords and hopos right here because there's a lot of notes on screen. And this set of strumming right here because it looks pretty fast. They will all open in their own separate things. You could do it just by uh, taking one and throwing it in here and doing the thumbnail crop method, make sure this is selected, go over to the left side over here and make sure you're on the polygonal lasso tool. So when you have this on screen, you can select everything here, the corners and stuff like that. And rather than doing the select inverse here, you could just go down to the bottom right over here and hit this button and create a mask. Um, what I do notice about these though, is if you do a to do with the warping. So if you try to uh, warp it, then it doesn't work. Yeah. Warp transformations aren't allowed. So like, if you want to like do like crazy warping for your thumbnail, say like, uh, like cosmic does with like all of the turning and stuff like that. Don't do mass instead. Just do it like this with separate files like this, because you can always uh, refer to them and you don't have to save it as like a project. So I'm going to crop these highways and I will see you guys. All right, so now I have all of my highways placed in here. Uh, they are not exactly even. Uh, one thing to note is that you always want to have, especially your side highways, to be even. We have all of our layers. Things I do suggest you do is go to the bottom right, create a folder here, and then title it highways so you can have something that tells you what is where. So we're gonna move all of these into the folder so it's easier to organize. So we're gonna take our top highway first. And I'm gonna take you through my process of when I am making highways so i usually tend to go with drop shadow and i try to have a, a bit of a higher spread and a like fairly like around like 40 ish size because i like to use outer glow also and it fills in that gap while also keeping a slight black edge to it so for this i usually do sometimes super short so you can get like that slight glow sometimes a little bit more so you can get a little bit like 
thicker of a glow, but we'll just stick with that for now. Uh, other things you can do is take the gradient overlay. So I have this gradient set already. You can go to normal and go to overlay and it will make it a nice color for you if you want to do it in that way. So if you have a specific theme that you want to go for for your thumbnail, you can use it like that. But for now, we will not use that for now. Uh, you can also do an inner glow, which is something I do to make uh, highways a little bit brighter. So you can set the color to white and then make it overlay once again. It'll make it a little bit brighter, not too much brighter than you need to. You can always increase the size to make it super freaking bright, but we don't need to do that right now. We'll keep it like this. So I'm going to repeat it for the other two highways. It's just two simple things just like this. Drop shadow and outer glow and then I'm just going to do this a little bit of movement to make it more organized so big part of the process is finding a background that would be good to you so depending on the song you want it could always just be the album but with some Gaussian blur on it or just a random galaxy background anything tends to work because it's just the background what you want them to see is usually on screen unless the background has an element that makes it look really cool um there's an edge trio thumbnail that I saw that has like a character peeking through the wall I'll throw it on screen right now so you can see exactly what I'm talking about but these elements are what is pretty important for this kinds of thing so I'm gonna just take a uh, a random background that I have I'm scrolling through my downloads real quick uh, I'm literally gonna use an old thumbnail okay this is my old Hanukkah thumbnail this will be the background for our thumbnail so we're gonna throw some Gaussian blur on it and once again it just disappears you can put it higher something like that for Gaussian blur but for me I'm gonna do motion blur to give it a little bit of motion you can't really see exactly what it is but it still fills in as a background so for right here you can notice that for something like this you have all of this dead space in the right corner I tend to like filling these kinds of things in, so I'm gonna take another image that I have and just put it in the corner. How about this picture of Ian flipping off the camera? That works perfect. All right, and then make sure he is below all the highway layers because you don't want him to be overlapping on top when you can still have him be underneath and tucked in neatly. So again, I usually do some drop shadow here and try to look a little bit more down because it doesn't need to be a stick on people. Same thing with the outer glow. You could take it and have it be a little bit more slight on the edge. It doesn't look too good right now but there's something like that. We will be going into text now. So when it comes to text, we're going to type out our word. All right, so we have Hypnovia. I'm gonna just avoid putting hard char because I just want to get this squared away. Make sure it's on top. Make a new folder for text because you're gonna need it eventually. You're gonna need something to store it all. So there's your text. I'm going to put the Hypnovia file in there and let's get started so when it comes to fonts there's a lot of different kinds of things you can do for it it's hard to find different fonts but you could get something done with some of the basic fonts that windows provides but if you do want a place to look for specific thumbnail fonts and stuff like that backgrounds highways ideas and talk to other thumbnail makers inside the ch community then i do advise you that you join the ch thumbnail maker discord it will be linked in the description below and also be in a pinned comment so you can come and uh, ask me some questions, ask other talented thumbnail makers some questions as well, uh, such as Cosmic, Gorilla, and all of those kinds of people. Um, they always have some good ideas, um, always pushing the boundaries of the thumbnail game. I'm just over here being able to have a nice little space for everybody to be in one spot. But if you're also a player and you want to request thumbnails, you can also join that server, uh, ping all of the thumbnail makers and the other trusted thumbnail makers who have made thumbnails for some of the biggest players in the community, and it gets some Thing it made for you sometimes people charge sometimes people don't for me i tend to not to depending on what it could be but i tend to not charge anyways let's get to text so we have our hypno via text right here and we're going to start with what we usually do aka drop shadow right here we have our drop shadow for text i go a little bit thicker just like the highways outer glow same thing a little bit thicker because it's a word so for the text gradient here, I'm gonna just pick something that's relatively similar to the background when it comes to like the color wheel. Um, you want something that will like be readable, but also still would pop a decent amount. So we'll go something like this. There's a little bit of gold in the background. Uh, we're gonna enlarge this slightly. And this is where a lot of people will just stop. They just put the text on screen. Boom, there it is. You can read it, it's good. Something like this would be perfect if you just want to stop like this. If you like simplistic, simplistic thumbnails, then you can go with something like this. But for something like this video that you're watching right now, we're going to be a little bit more advanced and just go into uh, how I do my depth of field. 
effects. I'll throw a picture on screen of what exactly I'm talking about. But we're going to go into that right now. So we have the text ready and done right here. What I want to do here, I'm going to right click the text box right here and go down to warp text. So my favorite thing to do here is choose arc and make sure it's on horizontal. I set this to zero so I can get my bearings first, specifically on the vertical distortion. You can do horizontal and make this go back and forth. I tend to not use this one unless I'm sticking text to the right or left side so you can get a little bit more of perspective there but when it comes to vertical you can always go up you can go down in this case let's go down because I did it up in the previous thumbnail so we have this right here and it's already got that little bit of a downfold so it's a little bit cooler so you can do like bend stuff if you want to as well uh, for this I'll do like a slight up curve and then bring the text down a little bit so it's a little bit easier to read and still takes up space with now clipping through the edge so now it's sized up to be uh, in the center now there it is there's that so I'm gonna get into what I do before text thickness so I'm going to take this layer right here hold alt on my keyboard and click it and drag upwards and you can make a duplicate copy you can also right click and hit duplicate layer right here and it works exactly the same so what I tend to do when it goes downwards I tend to pull the text down so it's all over the top and then get rid of the drop shadow of this one so it's just like this and you want to make sure you have this movement tool selected and then take arrow keys or anything like that and just push it up into the section. It creates a little bit of thickness for the text and makes it easier. There's definitely easier ways to do this, but this is how I've known how to do it for the three years I've been making Clone Hero thumbnails, both good and bad. So we're just gonna keep repeating that process. We're just gonna keep pulling one out and then moving it down, pulling one out, moving it down, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna go that right there so once that's done we have our four layers here I'm gonna add a fifth one okay this fifth one will serve as a little bit of boldness to it some people do like the whiteness of this text or for me I do like adding a little bit of a poppy texture to the front so I will choose this stroke to add on top of it while still having the white layer but having it pop out a little bit more with the black outline and just like that there's your text for this I'm gonna move uh, Ian down a little bit he's not in I am not I think about it he is completely in the folder so I'm going to move him below the folder and then the background is also in the thing okay there we go so I'm going to take him and I'm gonna move him down slightly so you can see his face you want all of your elements in here to be viewable at least so we're gonna go back up to the text and we're going to go back into the SFX you can do this a little bit earlier on if you want but I tend to do this first so I have my top text element because I don't put it on every single one uh, bevel and emboss is really nice to add certain things uh, you can play around these with these settings um, I tend to use either inner or outer bevel but inner bevel is what I've been using recently contour is good for adding some boldness to the text I'm going to just show you every single option so like you can see like the edges are coming out a little bit more do a little bit of pop so we'll do that one uh, for now and then texture there's a bunch of these different patterns don't ask why there's so many of these tree patterns in here I'm not too sure why uh, but I tend to use one of the three water ones that are in here So something like this in the middle and I don't want to make it too overbearing So I tend to turn things down so it doesn't look that much, but it gives it a nice little texture that Gives it a little bit more of a pop and also more like depth to it on screen So there's your text. There's your highways and stuff like that. You can also take your highways and go into the top bar over here go to filter blur motion blur add like a little bit of blur to it i usually tend to go around seven or so and you can get a little bit of blur behind your highway so i'll just do that to each of them uh, for consistency but that's just what i tend to do okay so you have all of these elements here you have everything that you can have on screen so i'm going to show you all the strategy that i've been using for about a year or so now when it comes to creating thumbnails and having specific elements on screen so what I tend to do is I take any kind of galaxy background with like pixels and stuff on screen I'm gonna use this red one that I have here it's just a red galaxy background that I have in my folder um, if you like this photo I can just give it to you in the CH thumbnail maker discord so I tend to make it full screen right here and focus specifically on the red parts but for this one, I will focus a little bit more on the bottom and have the purple be 
a little bit more of the focus here. So the purple will overlay the highways. So we have this right here. And what you do is go over to where it says normal, or you can right click and go to blending options. And then change the blend mode, keep scrolling up and down and see what looks good to you. It is completely preference based on what you want the, your thumbnail to look like. Um, it's always up to you. You can just change the hue of the highways. You can always just do stuff like this. But for this specific thumbnail, I think I will be using uh, overlay. So we have overlay here. You can take away the blues and give it a little bit of a different texture. The greens, of course, and the reds. You can do a combination of the two. So this is purple. So I actually do kind of like this. So I think I'm going to keep it like this with just only the green active. Now, if it looks a little bit too overwhelming for you, you can change the fill opacity to make it a little bit less. So say like the highways are a little bit too dark for you, you can make it about like 60 or 65, depending on what you want. Again, this is all preference based. And if it's still a little bit too much, you can always turn down the opacity a little bit. But I think this being at 60 or we'll go 65 for the people uh, will be perfect for this background. So when you have it set up like this, lock it in place. It's all good. You don't need to worry about it anymore. Uh, this is already set in stone. It gives it that nice little overlay. So that's the first thing I usually do. But the strategy that I use the most all the time, and it sounds so freaking stupid, but is quintessential to some of my thumbnails because it makes it look really good for no reason. What's this? This is in a United States of America quarter PNG. And what I like to do, what I like, like to do for this, shout out to Ian for having this uh, idea and turning it into reality. And then I kind of just built upon it a little bit. You zoom out very far because you need to zoom out really far for this. Take the corners, blast it all the way out. So it's like this. What you're looking for is the president's hair because it has all these edges. You might notice this now if you look at my thumbnails. There are these little edges that kind of add uh, to the quarter and it's almost like a like a three-dimensional thing but in this case if you keep it on top of everything which is what you should do lock it in place once you're done placing it change from normal to divide and you have the lighting overlay that I always have in my thumbnails you can always move it around see what would work for you and then you can always take your eraser tool and erase something that could be out of place in comparison to other stuff but with those two things you can be done and this is a completed thumbnail for me um if it were me i would add something like the fc crown some stars or something along those lines but in this case this would be perfect for anybody who wants it uh for a hypnovia hard fc or something like that i would add the hard text here but for the sake of this video i did not but this is basically the thumbnail process that i have for a lot of the things that i make do note that these thumbnails, while sometimes they do take very minimal time from like 10 to 15 minutes, sometimes when going a little bit more in depth for like ideas, backgrounds, highways, and communicating with the person you're creating it for, which is very important by the way, will make this process take even longer and up to like 30 minutes or so. It's always good to constantly make thumbnails because you always have to have ideas flowing and the more you make thumbnails, the more things you know and the more things you understand and the more things you learn about your thumbnail style and how to make thumbnails how to make certain things look good what colors match with other stuff what highways look good what color profiles look good in these thumbnails it's all just about creating thumbnails randomly and just having fun with it at the end of the day we make these thumbnails to look good and be appealing for uh the eye of the people there are so many different kinds of styles of thumbnail out there there's my kind of style uh that which kind of stems off of three as kind of style who really was the pioneer of clone hero thumbnails so shout out to him uh, there's a little bit more simplistic kinds of thumbnails, meme thumbnails with what Alec does. The realm of CH thumbnails is so wide, but this is just the general thing that I like to do for my thumbnails. Uh, but with, other than that, that has been the thumbnail tutorial for 2024. A little bit more advanced than the previous one I did uh, due to my own improvements when it comes to making thumbnails on my own. But since I would like to share this idea of making thumbnails with everybody and making sure that everybody can make high quality thumbnails everything that looks really good on their own they don't need to constantly ask other people for it then it's extremely cool for all that's happened 
again if you want to ask questions you want to get feedback from other talented thumbnail creators i strongly advise that you join the ch thumbnail maker discord both linked in the description and the pinned comment down below and i appreciate you guys for watching uh if you have any questions please leave them in the comments i will be free to answer them you can also add me at on discord uh at con c-o-n-j-a-e uh, but other than that thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys in the mini that i will upload at some point during the summer and i'll probably go live at some point bye